I'm really going to be teaching more than preaching, I think. But Exodus chapter 19. Everybody knows we've been in Exodus. We've been talking about Moses. We've been talking about God parting the Red Sea, the miracle he's done for us here. Well, we're going to stay in that vein just a little bit. But we're going to talk about when God came down in Exodus chapter 19. And we're going to be looking at verses 16, 16 through 20. But let me just give you 20 before I really start preaching this thing. It says, The Lord came down upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mount, and the Lord, the Lord called Moses up to the top of the mount, and Moses went up. Father, I thank you right now for your goodness, your mercy, your grace, your awesome power. Lord, I ask that you would fill this vessel with the Holy Ghost, Father, that I would preach your word and teach your word. Touch every heart, every mind, every soul at the sound of my voice. Father, let us receive your word. We thank you for every miracle that you have performed here today. We thank you for every healing, every heart that has been touched. Father, we give you the praise. We give you the glory. We give you all the honor. In the name of Jesus, we pray. And everybody says... Amen. Let's give God a big old clap of praise, y'all, before you see it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise God. Praise God. I believe. Okay, you can be seated. And I do want to say this, too. I thank God for Mike and Lynn, who are sitting in the back back there, because we have been praying earnestly about them taking a trip to Israel. They were going to go to Israel, and we've been praying about it, and, and I prayed that God had give them peace, and... Uh, for what to do because I've been concerned about that whole thing because of what's going on over there. But praise God, they did get a word. In fact, from Bill Chrysler, I think, helped call and uh, then Mike and them had peace and decided not to go. And I found out some of the flights had been canceled anyway about the time that y'all were to go. So, Praise the name of Jesus. Didn't have any insurance for the flights, y'all, but they got their money back anyway. Isn't God good? So we thank God for that, brother. Now, I have not heard from Eddie and Lisa. I hope everything's all right with them. I don't know if they got over there or not. Did they make it over there? But they're staying. That's a different thing, y'all. If you're going over there to stay, you trust God, God's called you over there. But to go to visit right now, I don't know if it's such a good time. Amen. You might want to stay from that area and let God use you here. Can I get another amen? Amen. God is good. I want to talk to you today about when God came down, church. This is so awesome. God really birthed this in my spirit. He began talking to me last night a little bit. But I want to read you some scripture, and I'm probably going to be teaching more. I might get a little preaching in here. I don't know. But Exodus chapter 19, look at verse, we're going to start with verse 16. It says, it came to pass on the third day in the morning that there were thunders, lightnings, and a thick cloud upon the mount. And the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. Remember, y'all, we've, we've, we've come out of Egypt. God delivered us, his people out of Egypt. God performed a miracle. He parted the Red Sea. The people have been run, uh, wandering around in the wilderness. Now, God had me to skip all the griping and complaining. And I'm glad that he did that because I feel like maybe we're maturing up in here. Can I get another amen? And we don't hear a lot of griping and complaining here. And I thank God for that. Amen. So God did. I'm not going to even mentioned about the griping but israel the israelites in the wilderness they were griping and complaining they griped about having no food they griped about having no water because they still had not learned to trust in god now i will say this right here y'all god has parted the red sea he did a, a tremendous miracle for us amen so there are still going to be times and hurdles we have to cross can i get amen up in here how many knows it ain't going to be hunky-dory just because we parted, God parted the Red Sea? But see, in a sense, I think we've matured so much that we're not grumbling or complaining. Just let me tell you this. We will come upon issues we have to deal with. You're going to have issues in your life. As a congregation, as a minister, we'll have issues we'll have to face. Can I get an amen? We might not like some of them, but it don't do no good to grab or complain. So we're going to skip that part because God told me to. We must have some good people in here with good hearts. Can I get an amen? So that's a wonderful thing, all right? But we see right here that they, they're camping and they see this miracle. What's happened? They've come, they're in the wilderness and they come to the, mount, to the mountain. And I love this part. They're at a mountain. And remember, I'm talking about when God came down. Okay, now let's look at verse 17. Verse 17 says that Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet with God. They stood at the nether part of the mount. And Mount Sinai was altogether on a smoke because the Lord descended. Listen to this. Here's the key, the key verse. The Bible says Mount Sinai was altogether on a smoke. In other words, that whole mountain was smoking. The fire, it says, because the Lord descended upon upon it in fire 
It's like, it's like the fire of God is surrounding God, his presence. The fire and it's coming down. His, his presence is coming down in fire because the Lord descended upon, upon it in fire. And the smoke ascended to the smoke of a furnace and the whole mount quaked greatly. I want you to try to picture this in your mind. I want you to try to picture what Moses is looking at. God has told Moses, Moses, bring all the people to this mount. Bring them here. Because that's, that's something I want to show them. And here's all this smoke, here's thunder, here's lightning, here's the fire. It's like the whole mountain's on fire. And on top of that, the mountain is quaking, it's shaking. Now, can you imagine that? Could you imagine being a part of that people and seeing this? And you're at the bottom of this mountain. And you're looking up and you're seeing the presence of God resting on that mountain. Now, can you imagine that for a minute? Just, just think if you were one of those people and you see this. And then look at verse 19. It says, when the voice of the trumpet sounded long and waxed louder and louder, Moses spoke and God answered him by voice. God begins to speak. So not only does Moses see all this, now he hears the voice of God. And then look at verse 20. And the Lord came down. The Lord came down, y'all, upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mount. And the Lord called Moses up to the top. So Moses went up. The most important thing of this right here, y'all, is not that Moses went up, but it's that God came down. You could go up to any place you want to go. You can go here, you can go there. But if the presence of the Lord is not there, who wants to go? Somebody help me. See, the important thing, Moses was at the place he's supposed to be. He's at the place where God is coming down because God is setting up a meeting. But this meeting is not just for Moses, y'all. It's for everybody around him. It's for all the people. Now, think about this for a minute. Look what happened, y'all. It began to thunder, lightning, the cloud covered the mountain, and the people are all doing what? They're trembling. Can you see? They're probably doing this right here. Imagine that, y'all. My Lord, you, you see, what if God did that right now on, on Living Branch Ministries? He set this thing on fire, a fire that won't burn you, a fire that don't burn you. know what I'm saying? You know, a fire that just really, really just refines you, makes you pure and holy. Good Lord, somebody help me up in here. This makes you glorified in his presence because you can't get in that kind of presence of God without your body being glorified. Jesus did it, and there was Moses and Elijah on the Mount of Transfiguration. Amen. So here, but here's the presence. God is, now you got to remember, God don't do things just to be doing them. He's doing it for a purpose and a reason. Mount Sinai began to smoke because the Lord descended in fire. The whole mountain is shaking. Everybody's moving. Everybody's quaking. And then God begins to speak. Now, if you are Moses, think about this for a minute. How would you feel when God says, come up here? Now, think about that for a minute. Now, see, Moses is a representative of all these people who much is given, much is required but here he is a representative. God says, Moses, I want you to come up this mountain. He's seeing the same thing the people see, y'all. But he's being told to come on up. Well, would you do it? Would you carry on? I want us to look at Moses and, and because we think Moses, you know, Moses is a man just like me and you. Okay, he's a man who believed in God. It's his faith was in God. And God would speak to him continuously. But think about this, y'all. He'd had a burning bush experience. But that burning bush experience is nothing compared to this mountain that's on fire. Oh, somebody help me up in here. You, you compare a little bush to this whole mountain that's aglow with the presence of an almighty God. And Moses, you're to come up. Now, Moses goes up. But I want you, there's a key verse. It's found in Hebrews 12, 21. You know how Moses went up? Because we think Moses just went on up there. Big old bad Moses. He's going up. Strong man of God. Hebrews 12, 21 says this, that so terrible was the sight that Moses said, I exceedingly fear and quake. Moses was, look y'all, Moses was shaking Everything got nothing on him. Come on, somebody help me up in here. Moses is shaking. Some of y'all didn't get that. Are y'all sleeping in here? 
You know, no, I ever said a whole lot of shaking going on anyway. Moses was shaking and the mountains quaking, it's on fire. But see, he didn't just go up like he's some kind of big bad man. This is the presence of an almighty God, y'all. This is God's presence. I think today we, we don't even understand the presence of God. I think, in fact, we have lost, in most of our churches today, we've lost the fear of God. Amen. Come on, y'all. We've lost the fear of God. We, we, don't, we don't fear God the way we should fear him. Moses is about to do something because God has a purpose. God has a plan for this man. He's a representative of God's people. He's going to be a representative. He's shaken because of this terrible sight that he's seeing, stepping into the presence of an almighty God. He knows, you know, he's fearful of God. He's so fearful that he ain't just going to go up there any other way. Come on, somebody help me up in here. Exodus 20, 20 says, Moses, Moses said this. He says, fear not, for God has come to prove you that his fear, God's fear, may be before your, before your faces that you sin not. Think about that for a minute. See, Moses is telling the people, this is what God said. God is doing this in front of you so that you will learn to fear him. Not be a scared of him like a scared of him, but you'll, you'll be so fearful that you'll realize that, hey, maybe I should not be doing what I'm doing. You know, if you've got a healthy fear of God, some things you won't do no more. Somebody help me up in here. See, we've lost that because nobody wants to talk about that today. Everybody wants a watered-down gospel where they can live any old way they want to live. Come on. But you cannot live any way you want to live. You've got to line up with God. You've got to do it God's way. And that's the problem today, y'all. We've got a watered-down gospel. Everybody wants to live their little lifestyle because it feels good to them. And God says it's an abomination. Somebody help me up in here here. You can't live any way you want to live and get into the presence of an almighty God. You cannot do it. It will not happen. We've lost the fear of God. When you have the fear of God in your heart, you realize, hey, I can't do that. God, come on y'all. God sees every single thing we do. Whether man sees it or not, God does. And see, Mo Moses, you better have it right here, son. Because this is for my people. Pastors take the pulpit lightly. Don't ever take the pulpit lightly, y'all. I promise you. Because every pastor is a representative of God's people. He is a spokesman. I mean, he's preaching and teaching God's people his word. You can't take anything lightly when it comes to God. He will hold you. Who much is given again, much is required. Now, why did God reveal himself to the people in this way? Two reasons. The first reason we've already talked about, or I got excited about. To establish, everybody say to establish a healthy fear of God. So the first thing, the reason God did this is to establish, the first thing to establish a healthy fear of God. Notice I said a healthy fear, okay? If you have a healthy fear of God, I promise you, it will keep you from sinning. Amen. It will help you live a cleaner life. Amen. Because you'll realize that it is displeasing to God. He don't like it. Amen. And when you really get close to God, you know if he don't like something, if you do it anyway, he's going he's gonna, to he's gonna take care of you. Amen. It don't take somebody. God don't have to bring somebody else. He'll do it personally. Mm, somebody help me up in here now. It's because you belong to God. He ain't going to let you do certain things. He better have you up in here. Come on, y'all. This ain't a popular message, but it don't matter. It's a good message. It's just one we need to hear. There are certain things we don't need to do, church. Somebody help me now. A person who sins. Now, listen to this, y'all. A person who sins willfully has momentarily. Now, I said momentarily. Did y'all hear that? Has momentarily blocked out the fear of God. Amen. Because you can't do certain things and have the fear of God rooting in your heart. So, and some people do that momentarily. We can block out the fear of God. We say, well, I don't, God didn't do nothing when I did that last time. Maybe I can sneak up here and do it again. God's long-suffering, God's patience. But I promise you, he knows what you did. He ain't forgotten. And there'll come a time, church, come on. I'm trying to help us up in here. Somebody help me up in here. Y'all got to help me because it's hard message. Devil don't like it. We need to live holy lives, y'all. We got to get back to being holy. God said, be ye holy for I am holy. Amen. 
Now he will, and what happens, you know, when you've got the fear of God blocked, we begin to lie to ourselves. We say, I'll get by with it. God don't mind it so much. God does mind it so much. God don't like it. And God will move because he's God. We live in an era, y'all. This time, this generation, we live in an era right now that people think they can do as they please or live however they want to. Amen. Why do you think we got so much homosexuality yeah. in the churches today? Right. Even in the pulpits. Amen. Pastors are claiming to be homosexuals and that God don't mind because it's my lifestyle. God's a God of love. Contrary to the word of God, church. Amen. You can sugarcoat it. You can do anything you want. But I promise you it is a sin against God. God don't like it. Amen. And God will deal with it. Amen. We don't have to deal with it. God will. But I promise you, God will deal with every person who says homosexuality is not a sin and God don't care. God does care and God's going to deal. And God will pass judgment. Somebody help me. Huh? Say what? Sin's genetic if you want to go that far. You see what I'm saying? See, homosexuality is a sin. Just like murder, just like stealing, just like lying. See, we're all born. You, people might be born with a, with a tendency to be a homosexual. You see what I'm saying? Just like some people are born with a tendency to steal, to covet. To, that's right. It's a sin. It's, what it is. it's a sin. Homosexuality is a sin like any other sin. You see what I'm saying? They may have a tendency to fall into that. In their, in their genealogy, in their, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? In their uh, family history tree. In my family tree, y'all, guess what? The sin was prevalent in mine, was drinking. Well, guess what? That passed down to me, and I, and I drank a lot, continuously. I drank a lot. But see, there come a time when I got saved, guess what? I didn't get drunk no more. Amen. So I ain't saying that some people can't be born and have a tendency to like the same gen gender. But it doesn't matter what they do, it's still sin, it's lust. You see what I'm saying? And you got to be delivered. you got to be set free. you got to be born again. People who are living that lifestyle can say what they want, y'all. Come on. Drunkards ain't going to enter into heaven. Homosexuals ain't going to. Somebody asked a big prominent uh, pastor who was uh, preaching to all these people. He preaches to 80 to 100,000 plus people. Ask them if there's, they asked him on national TV, would there be any homosexuals in, uh, in heaven? And he couldn't give a straight answer. You know what I'd have said? I said, there won't be no homosexuals there. There won't be no adulterers there. There won't be no murderers there. There won't be no liars there. There won't be no coveters there. There will be those that will be there. will be those that are cleansed by the blood of Jesus, filled with the spirit of the living God. Somebody help me up in here. That's what should have been said over national television. The only ones that are going to be in heaven are those that are cleansed by the blood, filled with the spirit of the living God. What an awesome time to, to tell truth instead of stuttering around and trying to get around something because you don't want to offend somebody. Don't worry, you got to offend people when it comes to truth, y'all. You got to speak truth. Amen. Can I get amen up in here? So you got to speak truth. So, you know, some people might be born with those tendencies, but it's still sin because why is it sin, y'all? Because God said it. Not because the preacher says it, not because anybody else, because God said it. There's preachers today saying that homosexuality is not a sin. Do you realize that? They're saying that. They're preaching that. They're saying that. And if you didn't know any better, you'd be deceived to believe that. And I promise you, as we go on, it's going to get even more. Come on, y'all. It's going to be even more of a battle. That's why you've got to stand for truth. You've got to speak truth. Can I get another amen up in here? And you can't paticate nothing. Praise God. All right, let's get back to this. We live in an era, though, where people think they can do as they please. Do or live however you like. You can't do that. Amen. And not go to heaven. Boy, that's not popular, is it? Huh? No, you don't, do you? That's good. Y'all hear that? Y'all hear that? You don't too. Y'all don't see two male birds together, do you? In fact, you know, I'm glad you brought that up. I'll be looking at my house. Dana wanted to put up this bird house, bird feeder. We'd be feeding these birds, and I promise you, every morning, this beautiful male red robin. I mean, red cardinal. Y'all know I'm good with birds. Praise God. <laughs> a red robin. Anybody ever seen a red robin? That's a gas station. Ain't nothing. A hamburger joint. This red cardinal will come up. Beautiful. He's a male. Can you tell he's a male? Because they got the brilliant, beautiful colors. What I heard, anyways. Okay. But here's what happens. Y'all love this. He'll be out there feeding. And then all of a sudden, here comes a female cardinal. 
and they'll be both feeding. And all of a sudden, they'll come to the round at the front, and they look at each other, and they do this. They kiss one another. Ain't that awesome? Well, I thought that was awesome anyway. <laughs> I don't even know why I put that in there. Why did I put that? Oh, because you said birds. But I thought it was so awesome. It's like they're just laid right there to come kiss each other. And I'd be thinking, maybe I ought to go kiss that woman of mine. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right, let's get back to this. Praise God. See, God used Moses, y'all. Here's what God is doing with Moses. He's using Moses to establish a holy, a righteous, a pure, and a respectful concept of his presence. See, this is the presence of God, and you, we've got to understand. Let me just tell you this. You can't enter God's presence just in your way. Now, that was the first thing, okay, to establish, all right? Uh, number two is this. The second reason why God allowed the people to see all this was to communicate written instructions for his people. This is so important right here. Number two, the reason God allowed this to happen, to communicate written instructions for his people. Exodus 24, 12 says this. And the Lord said unto Moses, come up to me in the mount and be there and I will give you tables of stone and a law and commandments which I have written that you may teach them. Think about that for a minute, y'all. God had Moses to come up that mountain so that he could give him God's written word. In fact, the Bible says that God writ, wrote those tablets. Those tablets, he, he wrote it with his finger. But this is the first time, let me tell you this, this is the first time in history that God himself wrote down his word. Do you realize that? The Bible's not been established. There's no written word, y'all. This is the first time in history that God begins to write his word. And he does it by a piece of the mountain. <laughs> well, where y'all think he got the granite from? He must have got it from that mountain. God can do anything, but he must have reached down and took a chunk of that mountain with his hand. He must have molded that thing out the way he wanted it to. And then God began to ride on it. Do y'all realize? Do y'all realize right now? Do you realize what we have right here? Good Lord, we have God's written word. People can say what they want, y'all, but this is God's written word. Now, I know this is penned by man, but I'm telling the very beginning, God, he wrote it with his finger. And he gives it to Moses. Oh, Lord, somebody help me up in here. The written word of God did not even exist, y'all, before this time. So just be appreciative, y'all, for what you got in your hand. Be appreciative for what you have in your heart. If you have his word in your heart, it's an awesome thing. God revealed his written word to Moses, and Moses was to reveal it to the people. So can you see how dangerous it would be for a preacher or a pastor not to stand for truth? and water down a gospel, water down God's word that he has proclaimed. You see how dangerous that is? You see how God's going to hold everybody? I promise you every teacher of his word will be, held, 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 will be responsible for what they say and what they speak. That's why it says don't hurry up your calling. Let God do it. Amen. It's important, y'all, for us to speak his word. Whether people like it or not, it doesn't matter. So what God does, he breaks off a chunk of the mountain, made it granite, and with his own finger begins to reveal his word. Now think about this, y'all. I want you to think about this because we've been preaching some of this. We've come through the Red Sea. We're going through the wilderness. Now we're at the mountain of God. And see, the mountain of God, we could say this, and this is really where I want to go to. We could say we've come to a place of meeting place of meeting. It's a place. Isn't it amazing that God picked out a place to meet with his people? See, they're in the wilderness and God still wants to meet with his people. He won't. See, Christianity y'all is so much more than just coming to church and, and doing this or doing that and, and doing things and, and not really 
meet with God. A relationship, brother. You got it. See, God, this is good that we come together and meet here. It's wonderful to do that. But see, God wants much more than that of you. He wants so much more of you than just to come here on a Sunday morning and just to come here on Wednesday night and let's meet in his presence. He wants you. Put your hand right here. Say me. He wants me. Yeah, he wants you every day to spend time with him. He wants to have a meeting place with you. I don't care whether it's in the morning, in the evening, at night, whenever. I personally, I love to get up in the morning. In fact, when I get up, first thing I do, I jump in the shower. I want to be clean when I get in the presence of God. Somebody help me up in there. That's just me, all right? I'll just take a shower, and I begin to pray, and then I, I want to spend time with the Lord. You have to have a place of meeting. We're going to go somewhere in a minute, but the people are now at the place of meeting. They're at the mountain. Now, let me just tell you this. I want to give you something spiritual before we go way too far, okay? Before I give you these four points, we end this thing. I want to tell you this. In Exodus 19, again, look at 21, because i got to show you this through 23. We're, we're going to... I just want to show you something to hear that what the Lord has done for us. It says, And the Lord said unto Moses, Go down, charge the people lest they break through, and the Lord to gaze, and many of them perish. Let, look at this right here. It says, Let the priest also which come near to the Lord sanctify themselves, let the Lord break, break forth upon them. I mean, these people, if they even touch that mountain, y'all guess what? They're going to be dead. That's what he's saying right here, okay? Basically, he's saying, you know, if they even break through, if they cut, uh, if they touch this mountain, they come up this mountain, they're going to be dead because the Lord's going to break forth on them. And, Mo and then verse 23, Moses said unto the Lord, the people cannot come up to the Mount Sinai, for you charge us and set bounds about the mountain sanctified. There were boundaries set up. I realize that around this mountain. Boundaries were set up so the people couldn't go up. And the Lord said to him, away, get thee down. Because they're going to break through. Moses went down to people and spoke to them. So Moses told them, said, listen, there's a boundary. If you cannot come up this mountain, you can't even touch it. If you do, you're going to be dead. Because God is establishing something, remember? Now, how many of those, there's, there's no, there's only one boundary to go through to get to the presence of God now? There is a boundary. You can't just get into the presence of God any way you think or any way you want. There's one way to go and one way only. And we know that way. That way is Jesus. He is the way, the truth, and the life. If you're going to get into the presence of God, the only way you can possibly get there today, y'all, is through Jesus. We have that by his word. Can I get another amen up in here? Ephesians 2.13 says this, But now in Christ Jesus, you who sometimes were afar off are made nigh by the blood of Jesus. So the way to get in the presence of the Lord to now or the presence of God today is through the blood of Jesus. He's the way, he's the truth, he is the life. Even 2 Corinthians 5.21 says this, For God has made Jesus to be sin for us who knew no sin that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So a lot of people who say they're in the presence of God and they bypass Jesus are not a bit more in the presence of God than the man on uh, Saturn. Because <clears throat> we've had a man on the moon before, ain't we? I can't use the moon. We've had a man on the moon before. Praise God. So I say a man on Saturn. You see what I'm saying, though? People say they're in the presence of God. People say, I know God. Oh, yeah, but they don't even know Jesus. It's impossible. So the only boundary that's keeping people from the presence of God now is Jesus. Now, the good thing about coming to know Jesus, when you know him and you know his blood's cleansing you and covering you and you're filled with the Spirit of God, you can go boldly through the throne of grace now, hallelujah, in the presence of an almighty God and let God begin to minister to you. And that's what God wants to do today. But first, he had to establish how perfect, pure, and holy he is. He had to establish, listen, y'all need to learn how to fear me because I'm the creator. Good Lord, think about that, y'all. You need to, can you imagine seeing that kind of power being manifested? I believe God wants to manifest his power today, and I believe he's going to do it, amen, in a mighty way and get us back to where we fear God, a healthy fear of God. So God established that, okay? He done that. Now, here's four points that I want to bring out before we finish this message, okay? Four points. And the first point is this. Out of these scriptures right here and what we've got, the first point is you need to meet regularly with God, and you need to... Pick a place. Somebody have me up in here. Oh, gotta get an amen. amen. When I say meet regularly, regularly with God, guess what? You mean you need to meet with Him every day. Amen. You need to have a place. 
All of us don't have mountains behind our yard. There's nothing behind mine but woods. Most of y'all might not have a mountain behind y'all's house. I've been in places where they had a mountain in the house. I've been to Virginia, West Virginia. Couldn't believe it. I walked out the door and I said, good Lord. Man, I'm talking 10 foot and here's a mountain going straight up. I said, my Lord. Never had experienced that much to I've seen some of Dana's kinfolk, them West Virginians. Man, they something do, let me tell you. They think they big and bad. All they say kind of stuff. I said, well, anyway, that's another story. But what you got to do, number one, y'all, you, you, you spend time with God regularly and you pick a place. Now, let me just tell you this, y'all. That place can be your living room. That place could be your bedroom. That place could be the bathroom. That place could be on your front porch. Amen? But the key is spend time with God. How can God, I mean, God wants us, he wants to meet with us. He wants to meet with you. And see, we get so tied up in stuff, we get so busy doing things, come on, y'all, that we neglect our time with him. What do we got if we neglect that time with him, y'all? We got nothing. So pick a place, pick a time, spend time with God. And when I say spend time with God, that don't mean you have kids running in or your spouse comes in or what. You know, you got to pick a place where, you know, there ain't nobody there. I don't even like the dog on my porch when I breathe. If he comes over there now, because Jordan got a dog, I ain't got no dog. But I go out on my porch and the dog, he knows, and now he don't even come over there. Because he knows I ain't got nothing to do with him right now. I'm praying. I'm in the presence of God. Might be scared. I don't care. Maybe I, it don't matter to me. I don't want no dog, though. You see what I'm saying? Interfering. I want time alone with the Lord. And that's what we all need, y'all. Spend time. That's number one. Number two, y'all, you need to be prepared. Can I get amen? amen? And the only way you can be prepared to be in the presence of the Lord is to be cleansed by the blood. Ask God to forgive you. I, I pray for forgiveness every day for things I've I'm, I'm probably done, don't even realize I've done, that could possibly... And I'm not saying we have to be so picky, but y'all, we, we fall so short of God's glory. So I just get up and say, Lord, forgive me today. Uh, even if I, I may go, if I mess up, Lord, forgive me. Cleanse me with your blood. Fill me with the Spirit of God. And then just you, you prepare yourself. See, the only way, Ray, that God can even spend any time with us is because of the blood of Jesus. Somebody have me up in here. He's the only one that's perfect, pure, and holy. He shed his blood. So when you come into the presence of God through the blood of Jesus, good Lord, it's like God said, that's my son. That's my daughter. Hallelujah, because I see the blood. Amen. So you prepare yourself. You get ready. Whatever you need to do, you prepare yourself. Then that's number two. Number three, you, to hear from God. And this is the key right here, y'all. To hear from God. You need his word. Amen. Oh, somebody help me. Now, this is important what I'm thinking to say. I believe in visions. I believe in dreams. I believe in the miraculous. Amen. Amen. I believe God can do anything. But let me tell you right here what God did. When I said to hear from God, you need his word. Everything God has established is by his word. See, when Moses come down from the mountain, God didn't tell Moses, Moses, you go down there and you tell him this vision. Moses, you go down there and you tell him this dream. Moses, you go down there and this or that. No, Moses, he told Moses, he says, Moses, you go down there, you give him my word. You tell him my word. Y'all, everything is established on the word of God. See, it doesn't matter what man says. Do I believe in visions? You better believe I do. God shows me things with Taco Bell signs, y'all. He shows me things. Good Lord, he showed me things going down 85, going to BMW before on a sign when I need to hear from God. He showed me things on the side of an 18-wheeler. Can you believe that? My Lord. I'm talking about that somebody just rode on with a, with a finger in the dirt. There's so much dirt on an 18-wheeler back, somebody rode on it and God spoke to me. God could do anything, church. You see what I'm saying? But God, he told Moses, you, t you teach, you bring forth. When you come down, you give them my word. Because everything is established on and by the word of God. Moses, don't you go down there and tell them what you want to tell them. You tell them what I said. See, that's the problem today. We got preachers and pastors who want to tell people Amen. what they want to hear. Amen. Don't tell me I'm going to go to hell if I don't get saved or born again. Don't tell me that I need to be cleansed by the blood. Don't tell me I need to be full of the Holy Ghost. Tell me something good. Just tell me that I can do what I want and still go to heaven. 
It's not true. It's a lie of the devil. So you come down with the word of God. You tell people the word of God. Moses, that's what I told you. Don't just instruct them. by. See, instruction has to come from the word of God. Can I get an amen? amen. And if you don't know the word of God, open up the book. And ask God to reveal it. And he will. He is a revealer of his word. Number four, the last thing, y'all. And I thought this was good. We ought to, how many thinks they can remember everything God has told them or done in their life? Hmm? How many things you can remember every little detail God's done in your life? Everything. You can't do it, can you? So number four is this, y'all. This gets you out of the journal and write every time, write down that journal every time God performs a miracle in your life. Y'all know I'm writing some stuff in this journal. Why, Lord, am I writing some stuff? Can I get an amen up in here? <laughs> write things down in your journal because you'll be surprised when you begin to write these things and you go back to look. Good Lord, it's like it jogs your memory. See, Lord, I remember that. And you can get some joy out of that stuff you write down. Can I get another amen up in here? Just write it down. It might be little to some people around you, but to me, those things are big. Amen. amen? So get you out of journal and write down everything God has done. He's a miracle working God. He can do anything. But sometimes we have a tendency to forget. They forgot about God parting that Red Sea pretty fast, didn't they? Y'all, there's one thing I tell you here. Never forget the miracle God has done right here. See, when I'm long and gone, come on. And these young people are coming up in here and whoever else is pastoring this ministry, they need to remember this miracle that we got right here, y'all. You see what I'm saying? If it's in a journal, we got to, hey, here it is. Look at the miracles God's performed to live in branch marriages. Look at the miracles God's performed in my life. Look at the miracles God's performed in your life. How many in here has got a journal? Praise God. I encourage y'all, get a journal, write it down. It's fun. Amen? Amen. Write down those Red Sea miracles. Well, that's it, y'all. When God comes down, just enjoy his presence. And I wanted to point this out and we'll quit. You know, God come down on Mount Sinai. But he also come down again. About 2,000 years or 1,500 years later. He came down again in the body of Jesus. Amen. God came down, y'all. And his presence is here now. All we have to do, we're in his body. See, he came down. And he came down to make a way for us to spend with him, to get into his presence. And to get into the Father's presence, y'all, Jesus, made, he, paid the, he made the way. He paid that price. Isn't that awesome to know that we can, God wants to meet with us. He wants to sit down with us. He wants to break bread with us, his word. And there's a way being made, and his name is Jesus. When God came down, y'all, the most blessed thing when he came down, amen. Can we stand on our feet and give God a big old clap of praise? Come on. Give God a